marketing interest applause, and I'm not Jack Gallagher. Uh, so uh, my name is Lindsay. I'm the Associate Artistic Director here at the B Street. It was wonderful to see uh, so many familiar faces out there at this check-in. Uh, just amazing to have you all back. I said this uh, at yesterday's 4 o'clock show of, of this same performance, uh, that this was that that was the fullest house we've had in in any of the theaters since March of 2020. But I actually think I think you all beat them. There's more people here today, uh, which is amazing. Uh, there's very few empty seats. It is so wonderful to see everyone coming out to support live entertainment. Uh, and you know, yes, thank you. Jack's gonna have a great show. I hope he's listening to this. Uh, so, and thank you so much. I know there's some extra protocols and things, so we really appreciate um, you bearing with us today as we get everyone in and seated. We're very uh, fortunate and grateful that we have fully vaccinated staff, volunteers, artists, crew, and audience. So, uh, uh, we, we know it takes a little bit longer, but hopefully uh, now you're in, you've got your drinks, you're ready to enjoy the show, um, which is going to be wonderful. We had two great performances yesterday and one today, uh, which is also being live streamed for some folks uh, who cannot be here in person. So uh, the, the good things to come out of the pandemic are those uh, abilities. So we're really excited about that. Just a few announcements before we get started with the show. I know there's a ton of familiar B Street faces in the crowd. Um, who Make any noise if you're a B Street subscriber. Or you go to a bunch of the shows over there. Yeah, I, I figured we just opened our holiday show written by Buck Busfield and Dave Perini on fr uh, Friday night, A Child's Christmas in Reno. Uh, it, is, it is wonderful, it is funny, it is heartwarming, uh, features a lot of the B Street company members and some uh, new faces as well. well. Check that out. It's appropriate for ages 14 and up, uh, so great thing to bring uh, the teens, the family to over the holidays. Uh, it's going to run through December 26th. Uh, if you've got uh, younger kids or grandkids or anybody uh, on this stage, we're going to be playing a family-friendly show for ages five and up, Tis the Season, holiday stories from across time, traditions, all kinds of stuff. It's going to be really fun. It's going to have um, music, laughs for the kids, laughs for the adults, um, and that's going to open December 18th and run through the 26th as well, uh, unless people like it, and then we'll run it a little bit longer. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, we've got a lot of music coming up in this theater. Uh, December, we've got tons of concerts. Check out our website or pick up a flyer in the lobby. Uh, we're going to have uh, some great things to bring uh, family and friends to Irish Christmas in America. Uh, beautiful musicians from Ireland singing some really amazing uh, carols and songs. Plus, uh, some favorites from Marin. Dirty Cello is a great thing to, to come to. Yeah, okay, somebody likes it back there. Uh, but lots of great stuff happening throughout the month of December, so check that out. Uh, I think that's about all I have. Also, uh, I told Jack this backstage, but there were 20 women who showed up at a party bus. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh. Uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to you because I love that that's how you're spending your Sunday afternoon. Uh, that's amazing, yeah. Woo! Awesome. Well, I hope you have a great time, uh, and, and I, it, I'm so it's so great to see people together again. Is, is what I mean, and, and together. Um, so, and uh, so, and that's awesome. So, I think that's about all I have. Drinks are allowed in the theater. We just ask that for the safety uh, of yourself and those around you. We are under a, a Sacramento County mask mandate. Uh, please do wear your mask when not enjoying your beverage. Uh, and the bar will remain open for the duration of the performance. If you would like to grab another drink, we just use caution uh, when exiting the way you came in uh, and coming back to your seat. Uh, please turn off the ringers on those cell phones. Uh, I think, you know, if you, you want to take a picture or something, that's fine. But we just want to make sure uh, nothing's distracting uh, for uh, those around you or for our wonderful uh, artist today. Uh, I think that is about all I have, uh, and I am now excited to introduce on this stage for the first time in over two years, we have, please give a warm Sophia welcome to Jack Gallagher and the Dick Wright Band. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome. How are you? Good, good. Oh, I thought 
the applause would last longer. That's fine. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here on a Sunday afternoon. We, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you, I'll take it from here. Uh, as Lindsay said, uh, this is the first, I was talking to my wife, uh, Jean Ellen, a couple of days ago, and I said, you know, uh, the last show that I did here was a show next door that I wrote with my son, Declan, called uh, A Stand-Up Guy. And I said, uh, thank you. And I said, boy, that was, uh, that was last year. And then I thought, no, that was two years ago. So I haven't worked in two years. Um, you know, I've worked, but I haven't performed. Uh, but here, here's the deal. Thank you so much for being here. I know that for a lot of you, this might be the first time that you've been in a large group in a long time, and I, I, and I appreciate so much that you made uh, this the thing that you wanted to come to. Uh, we've all been uh, sequestered for a while. I hope you enjoy the show. We have a really fun show planned, uh, planned for you. These are amazing musicians that I'm working with. Uh, it might get a little loud at some point, but that's okay, you can use that. And here's the thing I wanna say before we get going. This is not a political show. There's no politics involved at all. There's been too much of that lately. And there's a lot of shit that's going on outside there, right? So for the next 90 minutes, what is outside there does not exist. It's not here. We're not gonna talk about trials or verdicts or build back better bills or the fact that your car needs a transmission or you're overdrawn at the bank. Because all that shit's gonna be there when you leave. So for the next 90 minutes, enjoy the songs. We play a lot of, we play all cover tunes. If you know the words, sing along. And uh, this, there's a couple of songs. We started planning this uh, show in March of this year, and, and Dick Bright and I came up with the set list and picked a couple songs that now have different meanings for me because of what has transpired over the last few months. And the first one is one of those songs. Um, we, some of you who know me and my family know that we spend a, a portion of our year on Cape Cod in Massachusetts, where we're from, and uh, we drive back and forth. Uh, yes, I have a minivan, and uh, we drive with my son Liam and Declan sometimes and Harry the dog, and we drive back and forth, and uh, it takes us six days to, to do that. And this song is appropriate that we're gonna start with today because it's called Six Days on the Road.
Chance, Tommy Dunbar, Alan Leong, Dick Bright, Al Chan, and Kevin Hayes on percussion. How about that, huh? Al Chan, Al Chan, Al Chan. So, a uh, quick story on how this whole thing evolved. We've been doing this now uh, for 11 years, and yeah, I know. And they've all stuck with me for 11 years, which has to be some kind of record. Uh, it started because I was writing a, a show about my son Liam called A Different Kind of Cool, and uh, I had written some comedy material, but I didn't have enough to do an entire comedy show. So Tommy said, well, why don't we put a band together? And, and I said, I don't sing. And he said, yeah, but you can sing, and you like music. And I'd never sung in public before, so they, Tommy and Dick, gathered all these guys, and, and it just took off from there, and it's been a, a lot of fun uh, for all those years. We're going to do a song now that we did, I think we did it the first year. I think so. Yeah, and uh, you know this song. It's kind of a drag by the Buckinghams. <laughs> Buckinghams were from Chicago, but they, it was that period in the 60s where everybody wanted to sound like they were British. So you had the Buckinghams, you had the Bo Brummels in San Francisco, you had the Knickerbockers on the East Coast, you had the Sir Douglas Quintet, who were from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, uh, Prince? Prince? No, sir. <laughs> Royal Guardsmen. Sorry. The Royal Guardsmen, thank you, Tommy. Snoopy, Snoopy. Snoopy. yeah. Snoopy. Dick, if you could just stand back a little. That'd be great. <laughs> The thing I like about this song is the background vocals. A lot of pop song background vocals are ooh, ah. This, this song has an entirely different story in the background vocals. So if you haven't heard it and listened to that, I want Tommy and Al, who do background on this, to, to tell you what, the, what they're actually saying so when we sing it, you can, you can understand. Listen to me when I'm speaking Cause you know the words I'm making Oh, I know that you've been cheating Oh, I hope that we'll be meeting Oh, come on, oh, come on So, okay, so when it pops up you'll go Oh, I never knew that So here it is, this is kind of a drag by the Buckinghams You know, I gotta tell you that sometimes we're having more fun up here than you're having, so. But I hope you enjoy all of this. So tonight what we're going to do 
Or we play cover tunes, obviously. None of this stuff's original. And we try to play the cover tunes in the way that they were sung originally that you know so you can sing along or you go, oh yeah, I know that. Um, we try not to, okay, I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, this summer we were uh, in Manhattan visiting my son Declan, who's here today, and uh, we went, yeah, look at you. We, uh, <laughs> we went to uh, Central Park and we went to Strawberry Fields, the John Lennon Memorial, yeah. And they have buskers there that are playing Beatles tunes, yeah. They're interpreting them. No, don't do that. It's the Beatles. You're not gonna make it better. I don't need to hear Eleanor Rigby as a reggae tune, so just. No, I want you everywhere I go. I want you to just, I just want you to follow me around. So there are songs that uh, maybe lend themselves to a different interpretation. So tonight, excuse me, we're gonna do three songs that we call covering covers. These are uh, covers of songs that you know that are completely different than the original. And the first one we're going to do is, remember the Supremes tune, You Keep Me Hanging On? Yeah, yeah can we play a little bit of that? Great song, right? But it's wrong. That's way too upbeat. This is a breakup tune. This is about a guy or a gal whose heart is so broken that when they see this other person on the street, they want to die. It doesn't have to be, hey, you see, you, there you feel so shitty. No. <laughs> this song needs emotion. This song needs to make you feel that this person is hurt. And the Vanilla Fudge did just that. This song has emotion. And because we try to cover things as well as they were the first time, we're going to do the Vanilla Fudge version of You Keep Me Hanging On with all the emotion necessary.
That's some emotion. So uh, we're going to take a quick moment here. Enjoying yourself so far? Good, good, very good. I uh, just want to take a really quick moment to mention that Dick Bright, our maestro, our music director, our leader, is a newlywed. I am, I am. Thank you, thank you. Poor Valerie. How long has it been, Dick, since you've been married? Uh, three months. Three months. Very new. Went to Bora Bora. And Ooh, it was very just nice. Like paradise and life yeah. is good. Very Excellent. lucky. Very lucky. Tom, how long have you been married? 26 years. 26. Al? 34 years. 34. Dino? 38. 38. Alan and, uh, and Kevin are single, but uh, 41 for me and uh, the lovely Jean Ellen. Yeah. yeah. There she is right there. Um, do you see how quickly those guys answered? That's what you need to do if you're a guy when someone asks you how long you've been married. <laughs> Seriously, you need to know those years as well as you know your shoe size, brother. Because the worst thing you want to do is have somebody say, how long you've been married, and go, oh. Or, the, worse than that, the look. Don't do the, don't. How long you been married? Don't look at your wife. How long you guys been married? It's over, you're done, it's over. Now women will look at you if somebody asks them, but it's a completely different look, isn't it? How long you been married? They look at you like, I know, do you? So this is a song we're gonna do next, uh, and I say this with all the love I can muster. I would never dedicate a song to my wife because it would embarrass her too much. But if I were to dedicate a song to her, it would be this one. This is a song by Jerry Rafferty. Uh, you right, might remember him, he did Baker Street. It was a big hit for him. He was also in a band called Steeler's Wheel. Do you remember that song, Stuck in the Middle with You? That song's actually about having dinner with record executives. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle with you. This is a song, one of my favorite songs, and you need to listen to Tommy Dunbar play the guitar on this because it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's superb. That's not even a good enough word for it. Uh, this is a song called Right Down the Line.
Tommy Dunbar. I got to apologize a little. I've got a cold, so uh, I have been haven't had a cold in like, I don't know, 10 years. And of course, this is the week I get a cold, so I've been drinking throat coat until I might have to leave to pee in the middle of the set. So, <laughs> so we were going to uh, do a song that we've done several times called Stay With Me by The Faces. And I decided after listening to that in today's climate that the lyrics were too a little misogynistic. And I decided I didn't want to do it because it's a song about a guy taking a woman home and just don't be here in the morning when I wake up. Fine, take a cab, but I just don't want to see you. What's your name again? So I said to the guys, I, I don't know, man. I don't feel right singing this song. So we replaced it with a song by Jackson Brown that's about his penis. I tried. And you wouldn't know it was about that unless I told you. you would, and it's not a song that you would expect from Jackson Brown, who wrote, you know, Doctor My Eyes and uh, Fountain of Sorrow and uh, Jamaica Say You Will, these kind of beautiful love songs. Uh, but he wrote this one, and uh, it's called Redneck Friend.
Thank you. So one of the things that happened during the pandemic was uh, I didn't get a chance to perform anything, stand up or anything. And what I usually would do for stand up is I, I write material and you know, I think it's genius. <laughs> and then I would do it in front of a crowd and they'd look at me like, is there food or? <laughs> so I write down these notes and what I would do initially is just go to a club with my notebook and just read the stuff. It's not, it's not finished, it's in a very, uh, you know, beginning stage. Um, and I haven't had a chance to do that, so I'm actually gonna do that for some of you tonight here, so yeah. No, don't get excited, because <laughs> seriously, on a scale of one to 10, one being the beginning and 10 being finished, this is about a three we're at now. So I'm just warning you. Um, <laughs> The next song we're going to do is, uh, let me look, because uh, am I right? Yeah. This is our second covered cover. Uh, this is the second song that we're going to do that is a cover of an original. It's nothing like it. And you remember the Del Shannon tune, Runaway? Yeah, yeah, yeah big hit in the 60s. Uh, we're going to do the Bonnie Raitt version. <laughs> this was done by Bonnie Raitt, God, how many years ago? It's going to be 25 years 45 ago. Years. How many? 45, 1976. 1976, an album called Sweet Forgiveness. <laughs> was just an amazing album, and uh, this, is, this is Runaway, uh, Bonnie Raitt's version.
Dean Chance on slide guitar. So some of these songs have uh, some, uh, maybe some value in terms of, I don't know, political, I don't know, just riffing. This song has no value at all. It's just a rock song. It's got stupid lyrics. Uh, it's by a band called Mountain. Mountain, you can tell right there they're not going to be doing a lot of ballads. Now, this song is not from this album, but they had an album called uh, Nantucket Sleigh Ride. Does anybody know what that is? Well, sir, you want to tell us what it is? Do you know? The Nantucket Sleigh Ride. Back in the day. Correct? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's an end. Did you hear that? So they would harpoon a whale, they were in a smaller boat. Well, I would take him for a ride, and that was called the Nantucket Sleigh Ride. Well, there you go. I, I thought no bummers for 90 minutes. It's not a bummer. Okay. Take him for a ride. It's, a little it's, bit. Nice it's take him for a ride. I went for a sleigh ride, dick. Okay. <laughs> that S-L-A-Y. I bet they were singing jingle bells. S-L-A-Y. Oh, ouch. <laughs> Didn't think of that. No, do you know that for a long time, Nantucket, the island of Nantucket, and the city of New Bedford in Massachusetts were the richest places in the world. They were the Dubai of that time because of whales. Everything was used, whale oil, blubber, all that stuff. So they were very, in fact, the first Macy's department store was on Nantucket. Uh, and then fossil fuels came along and the whales, uh, I guess they were happy. <laughs> anyway, this is just a song that just rocks and <laughs> it's called Mississippi Queen. There you go. Heavy. Heaviosity. So, okay, so while we're setting up, here's uh, some of the material I've been working on. So I'm just going to run this by you. Um, so these are uh, expressions that I heard that sometimes don't make sense. 
uh, when somebody's not feeling well. I'm not feeling up to par. Isn't par a good thing? If you were below par, wouldn't that be a good thing? Shouldn't you be saying, I feel bogey? <laughs> Another one that doesn't make sense. You want your cake and eat it too. Yeah. If you show me cake, mm -hmm. I want to eat it. Don't show me the cake and go, no, no, you can just look. You can't have any. You just, you can, come on, don't be an ass. You'd want to have it both. Here's another one, a pair of pants. It's not a pair of pants, it's one pant. A shirt has two arms, you don't call it a pair of shirts. Well, my dad always used to say this one, stop crying, because I got something that'll really make you cry. <laughs> no, I'm okay with this, thanks very much. And my mother always used to say this one, well, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. And I remember as a, like a nine or 10 year old kid going, well, Jesus, no wonder I'm full, that stomach's tiny. So we're gonna do something different. We're going to, uh, we're gonna slow it down a little bit. And this is our last covered cover. And I don't know if you could actually consider it a cover since it's the, uh, done by the person who wrote it. But you know the hit from this song by Linda, Ron Linda Ronstadt and the Stone Ponies, Different Drum, right? Well, that song was actually written by Mike Nesmith of the Monkees. And we're gonna do the Mike Nesmith version of Different Drum. different drum well, can't you tell by the way I run every time you make eyes at me yes we cry moan and say it'll work out but honey child I've got my doubts I can't see the forest for the tree So this next, uh, next tune is one of my favorites, uh, one of my all-time favorites. I um, mean, if you've seen this show before, uh, we've done this, I think we've done this in pretty much every show that we've done. 
I, I really like this song. It's by a country artist called Rodney Crowell. And uh, it's about getting older and appreciating all the things that you have, even if you haven't accomplished everything that you wanted. And just being happy with the life that you have and coming to grips with the fact uh, that you didn't get everything you wanted. Uh, and what I love about this song is at the very end of the song, he has this completely, I can, is it disparate? How do you pronounce the word? Disparate. disparate? Either one. Okay. Tomato, tomato. Thank you, potato, potato. Yep. Uh, he, he lists this, this, this list of names of these people that don't seem to, to have any connection to each other, but there's five or six names of people at the end of the song that, that he likes enough that it makes him want to stick around and, and be here a little longer. And so, like I mentioned, it's by a country artist called Rodney Crowell, and this is a song called Earthbound. I'm in need of thicker glasses, but it's all okay. Someday I'll be leaving, but I just can't help believing that it's not today. Hey, every golden moment I have found. Well, I've done my best to run right. Yeah. 
Thank you. Rodney Crowell. Yeah. So as I mentioned at the top of the show, there's a couple of songs uh, that were originally on this set list a long time ago, Six Days on the Road, reminding me of driving back and forth to, uh, to Cape Cod. And this next song, Hey Patrick, a sound man, we're getting somebody else's show in Al's monitor, or Tommy's monitor. I don't know what we're listening to, but it's good. But <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I had the game on. <laughs> you, and you I, are the absolute last yeah. person in the world that would have any game on. Do, I, you, do you know what game is on today? What sport? Or, no, no. <laughs> I thought I was just hearing voices, seriously. <laughs> Did you think it was just in your head? Mm -hmm. Did you take your pill this morning? <laughs> See, there you go. I talked to you about that. So this song is, uh, I've always liked this song, and uh, it has a new meaning to me now. It's a song by a band called Trigger Hippie. Uh, Trigger Hippie, in their first incarnation, was uh, Joan Osborne, Steve Gorman, the original drummer for the Black Crows, and Jackie Green, Sacramento's Jackie Green. And this is a song called Tennessee Mud, and it's about a, 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 a terrible rainstorm, what they refer to as biblical weather and trying to navigate everything that's happening during this, this, uh, this rainstorm. And I told you I've always liked this song. Well, there's a new reason that I like it. Um, as I mentioned, we drive back and forth uh, from Massachusetts, and we got home two weeks ago yesterday. We were in uh, Harwich Port, where we lived for five months, and the van was loaded, and, and the top of the van, uh, the box was loaded. We were ready to go. Going to leave on a Thursday. Uh, Tuesday night, between Tuesday night and Wednesday morning, we had a nor'easter. Uh, no snow, but 50 mile an hour, 60 mile an hour sustained winds, 95 plus miles an hour gusts, and rain that felt like somebody was throwing darts at your face. And at four o'clock in the morning, a 70 year old black cherry tree uprooted and hit our house. So there you go. There, uh, there's actually a house behind that tree. Um, uh, four o'clock in the morning, this, this crash, and I took a flashlight and went out in front of the house, and it's dark, and I'm being pelted. I could not figure out what happened. And then this tree that was the centerpiece of our front yard, uh, I realized had uprooted. Because Cape Cod is just, there's not a lot of loam, it's sand. We, we're about a half a mile from the beach, so this, when this thing uprooted, all you could see under the hole was just sand. So there wasn't really anything holding it. And uh, I flipped out. Uh, I'm usually the one in our family, I think my lovely wife, Jean Ellen, will agree that I'm usually the one who says, just relax, we're gonna be okay. And I freaked. Uh, I came into the house and I said to Jean, we are fucked. <laughs> fucked! <laughs> it's on the house, it's on the goddamn house! Jesus, Jeannie. And Jean, God love her, said, it's gonna be okay, everything's gonna be fine. When the sun comes up in the morning, we'll see what the damage is, and we'll, and it wasn't terrible damage. Uh, it did give us a new skylight in a bathroom, <laughs> which is lovely. Um, and the next morning, I said to our son, Liam, our youngest, I said, did the tree hitting the house wake you up last night? And he said, no, you ranting about it did. <laughs> so, so it's all good, nobody got hurt, everybody's fine, but now when I hear this song, it reminds me of, of, of that tree. So this is a song by Trigger Hippie called Tennessee Mud.
Thank you. Hey, so we had asked folks who wanted to do background uh, singing to put their names in a hat. So uh, we're gonna pick out a few names now, and uh, then you're gonna get a chance to, uh, to help us do a song. So if we have the hat, here comes our friend Mindy. Swell Productions. I'm not looking. First person is Janet King. <laughs> Janet. So Janet, if you'll come to, I'm sorry. I'm sorry? 20 ladies, yes ma'am. There's oh, what? Oh, it's no. a party bus. What we just I know, a party bus. That's very exciting for you. <laughs> I know, thank yes. Are you in charge of the party bus? Are you the one that put it all together? Okay, that's great. What is your name? I'm talking to her, ma'am. You can tell because I'm looking right at her. These are basic social cues. Where's uh, Janet? Okay, Janet, come on out. And uh, we're going to have you walk over to this side of the stage here, uh, over in that corner. Sorry, we'll do this as quickly as possible. Second name, Kathy Trapp. Where's Kathy? No, ma'am, again. <laughs> Think of the amplified voice as, as a sort of clue as to who's in charge. It's, it's, I know, it's hard. You've been in the house a couple of years, but I know. It'll come right back to you, I swear to God. Put your mask on. And the last one is Linda, Linda, that's the canton from Massachusetts. Linda, Linda Sanders. Okay. Oh, the party bus. Is that you? Is that the party lady? Okay, go out. Come on, just go out. Ma'am, the show has a limited amount of time, so you're either going to move or you're going to sit down. It's really not that difficult. So if you go right over here, ladies. I know this takes a while. What? Go, come, follow me. Come right down here. Here we go. Good luck getting out to that bus. Right over here, right up those stairs. And then when you get up to the top of the stairs, take a left, and you'll meet a gentleman up there who will take you backstage. Did we get our third person? Did she not want to come down? Oh, is she over there? Okay, cool. Okay, thank you. So they're going to get a little uh, tutorial, and then we're going to ask you to help us too. We're going to need audience participation from the whole group at some point on this song. But now what we'd like to do, I think, let me look. Yeah, we're going to do a song by the Beatles. Yeah, this is a more obscure Beatle tune. It's a George tune. And as you know, George would get like one song on an album, and then he they broke up and he put out All Things Must Pass and everybody went, holy crap. <laughs> Why didn't they let him put these on an album? Uh, this song was written about a week or recorded about a week before they went to Bermuda to start filming Help. And um, it was, he was dating a, a model at the time called Patty Boyd. And boy, those party <laughs> girls are loud. <laughs> holy shit, did I make a mistake? The bus driver's out there now going on the phone going, seriously, get somebody else. I can't drive them home. There's like 20 of them, and there's one in a white blouse, and she's nuts. I swear to God, she's just crazy. So this is a, this is a tune uh, from the Help soundtrack by George, and it's called I Need You.
Thank you. So uh, let's get our background singers out here if we could. Oh, Dean's going to, actually, Dean's going to give them a little tutorial on the song we're going to do. And like I mentioned, uh, we're going to ask you uh, later on in this song to help out. I know you've, some of you have your masks on. Uh, you might just sing through the mask, and some of you are already breaking the rules. So. Uh, that's not going to uh, that's not going to hurt it. This is a song that you're going to know. We're not going to tell you what it is because as soon as you well, most of you, as soon as you hear the intro, you'll probably be able to figure that out. But before we continue, uh, any questions? <laughs> uh oh, Dick has a question. <laughs> I can see you. I got peripheral vision. What's the question? Uh, when do we get paid? <laughs> well, we'll see how this goes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are we ready? Let's bring out the uh, ladies. Here they are. Give them a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Here they are. You're going to be on this mic. Yes, we can pick a song that we knew, because they did. No, no I said, are you serious? Yeah, so I said. Okay, so here's your mic, ladies. Get right up to the mic. And check, check, check. There you go. Alcohol is a terrible thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's, a, it's an awful thing. Getting this thing. Yeah. All right, so we're going to ask for your help in a minute. The ladies, excuse me, the women are going to help us with this. And uh, here we go. Ready? Here we go.
ladies. Thank you very much. Thank well you. done. Thank you. Excellent. Really have to introduce you to the concept of a microphone. <laughs> it's a party. It was a party and we enjoyed it. So over the course, we're, we're, we're kind of coming to the end of our evening with you. Uh, your afternoon. No, oh, you'll be home by 6 o'clock. That's all you care about. <laughs> it's going to be dark when you go out there, so, you know. <laughs> isn't it the weirdest thing getting old, isn't it? Because you know what my New Year's resolution is? I'm going to try to get out of a chair without making a noise. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Sad. Sad. Sad dad. Sad dad. <laughs> Over the course of our time together, we have done a bunch of medleys that have all been written by our man Dick Bright. And, uh, and whoa, whoa, a lot and, of and help. we worked on. A lot of help, help from our friends, right, yep, in the all band. All of our friends helped. And we've done, uh, we did a pro drug medley. Uh, I preferred the anti drug medley. We did an anti drug medley. Nick We did a Nick Lowe medley. That was cool. Yeah, that was a fun one. But this, talking to people who have seen this show, uh, this is their favorite medley, and we'll do that for you tonight. Excuse me, this cold is messing me up, dude. I'm on so much nasal spray. That, that person has a parrot head. Uh, you know, this is a, a medley by the Rascals. And uh, I don't know about you, I've said this before. Sometimes when I hear music, certain songs, it takes me right back to that place I was when I heard those songs, 14, 15 years old. And sometimes, and I know this sounds odd, but some of you might uh, agree or know what I'm talking about. Sometimes I can almost smell that moment, you know, and, and, the, and it's just outside my grasp, you know, it's just like it's almost there. And that's what happens when I hear these rascal songs. I think about the, the house I grew up in in a little town called West Bridgewater, Massachusetts. And I, I smell the grass behind the barn that was just mown. That's where my brother Billy and I would play catch for hours, hours. And we play a game called Fantastic Catch. Fantastic Catch, the rules are very simple. One of us would stand with our back against the barn, and we played this game so often that my dad put chicken wire up on the windows and the door in the back of the barn because we kept breaking the windows so much. Fantastic catch. One of us would stand with our back against the barn, maybe six, seven feet in front of it, pretending it was the green monster at Fenway. And the other guy would stand 20, 25 yards away, and he'd throw the ball. Fantastic catch. Well, that's what he would yell if you caught the ball. If you jumped up high enough and, 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 you, and you caught it, then the guy who threw it would, would yell, Fantastic catch. We play this game for hours and hours. It's one of the happiest memories I have of my brother. There's a few by the rascals. Cruising on a Sunday afternoon. Really couldn't get away too soon.
It's a beautiful morning. Oh, I think I. changing how can I be sure where I stand with you whenever I whenever I am away from you my alibi is telling people I don't care
Thank you. Kevin Hayes on the drums. Yeah. Got a couple more tunes before we wrap it up this afternoon. And before we do that, I really want to, one more time, uh, introduce you to the, the band. Um, I've been working with these guys for now for 11 years. And uh, I have to tell you that it's the most fun that I have. Um, I work alone when I do my stand-up or I do my one-mans. And uh, being with these guys, who are all great guys, as my dad would say, not a shithead in the group. Well. That's true, I mean, we were not gonna name names. But it's like being part of a gang, and I swear we have just as much fun at the rehearsals as we have doing the gigs, but we're really, really, really happy that you've been here today, and I hope you've enjoyed yourselves uh, so far. Thank you. So, starting over here, as I mentioned, uh, Dick is a Bay Area legend. Uh, he, he's performed with everybody from Ella Fitzgerald to Huey Lewis in the News, and, and he's just uh, an amazing musician, and, and, and uh, on top of that, he's a great guy. That's Dick Bright, ladies and gentlemen. Not as much fun as playing with you. On guitar, he's been a Rubenu in the Rubenus for 50 years. And you've seen what he can do today. And you know what's amazing about Tommy? I don't, I don't, I play the bass guitar a little, but Tommy plays those, li those licks, those, those lead riffs. He never looks at the fretboard. He's never looking down to make his sure his fingers are in the right spot. He's just, he's, he's amazing. That's Tommy Dunbar. <laughs> and again, on the drums, this guy's played with, I won't go through the list of people that he's played with, but he's played with everybody. He comes from a, a, a really well-known Bay Area musical family, and anybody in this band will tell you that the, dr the drums, if the drummer's not good, the show's not good. That's just the way it is. And he's, honest to God, one of the best in the business, and I'm so thrilled that he has worked with me for all these years. That's Kevin Hayes. <laughs> On keyboards, 
You know what I love about Alan? He, he, when we're like setting up for dudes and all that stuff, he plays this interstitial stuff. Just you know, he's, he's just an amazing keyboard player, and that's Alan Leong. Yeah. I've known Dean Chance for, since we moved to Sacramento, and right when I started doing the Crystal Ice Cream commercials, as some of you might remember. Uh, Dean was sort of my mentor. He sort of walked me through that. I'd never done commercials before. He's a smart man. He's a funny man. He's a good friend of mine. That's Dean Chance. Yeah. Okay. And last but certainly not least, and I think I speak for everybody in the band when I say that we are thrilled to have uh, another one of the Rubenus, the new guy. He's been in the band for 40 years. Um, <laughs> But I do think I speak for everybody yep. in the band when I say that we are thrilled that Al Chan is here today because Al Chan is here today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a couple more tunes before we wrap up this next one. I have a, uh, an affinity for bringing songs to the band that they're like, what? Uh, songs like uh, Peter Pumpkinhead, yeah. uh, The Mayor Sweet of Simpleton. Yeah. What Sweet is it? Cream ladies. Sweet Cream Ladies. That's uh, a good one, though. No, no, no. Moving Fl Targets. Flo and Eddie, uh, Moving Targets Flo and was were the worst. ridiculous. All, not a word, though. Everybody went, yeah, we'll learn it. We'll do it. Yeah. Uh, brought them this song, and this is a really interesting song, because, Dick, explain why it's, because I'm not a musical Well, guy. most rock and roll, it's in, like, straight one, two, three, four. This one is, like, Four and seven and five and it's kind of you kind of like need a pig like to dance to it. It's What'd just kind of. Do not clap along. Yeah, you won't. You do not clap along. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. This is a song by a band called NRBQ, which stands for the New Rhythm and Blues Quartet, and they are not well known, but they are considered musicians' musicians. They're the guys that other musicians will say these guys are unbelievable, and uh, this was a song that I first heard. Uh, I didn't mention this the last two shows. Uh, I was in a movie with Bobcat Goldthwait called uh, Shakes the Clown. Uh, oh, yeah. Classic. Yeah. Cult classic. Cult classic, Cult Shakes classic. the Clown. And uh, this was a song that he used in that movie, and since then it's, it's been one of my favorite songs. This is a song called NRBQ called Me and the Boys. <laughs> Driver, tell us how to drive me and the boys. Just me and the boys. Me and the boys. Just grooving, taking in the sights. Me and the boys. Just me and the boys. Me and the boys. Smells, but we love that sound. Me and the boys. Just me and the boys. Me and the boys. It ain't like us to hang around this town. Cause squares just bring us down. I've got to find me something. We'll soon get there. Me and the boys. Just me and the boys. Me and the boys. Just me and the boys. Me and the boys. Just me and the boys. 
Hey, Jack. Syncopation. Before we uh, do another one, um, you were so nice to thank us on behalf of the boys. This is like the most fun gig we've ever had, 11 years. You are the best, and we thank you. And I will pay you. <laughs> How much? That depends. Okay. So the final song we're gonna do for you tonight, and I hope that you've had a good time. Uh, I hope, thank you. Good. I hope you haven't uh, thought about anything that's out there other than that you're going back. And, and this last song, this, is, this will serve as our encore. We never leave uh, because the chances are you won't call us back. So we're just gonna give you the, the encore. <laughs> it's true, sad but true. I think they're done. Don't you think they're done? <laughs> well, they generally turn the lights up when they're done. But I, I think that's it. We should go, Richard. It's getting dark. It's dark out it's there. It's getting dark. And the temperature went below 55. What the Jesus? <laughs> so uh, this is a song that was written by Nick Lowe. And Elvis Costello recorded and had the most successful recording with it. And it's a pop song. But it has a message that uh, I think is important, even if it's a pop song, because there's so much divisiveness and there's so much hate and anger. And I'll tell you something. Uh, we're, we're all good people. We are. I don't care who you voted for. You're still a good person. Look at it this way. Let me, let me, let, let me ask you this. If you're, if you're in the supermarket and something drops out of somebody's cart and you see it, before you go to pick it up, do you ask them who they voted for? <laughs> no. You just pick it up because we're good people. And there's only a few people on both sides of the aisle that are telling us what they want us to hear so they can stay in power, and that's fine. But I think all that most of us want to do is just get on with our lives and just be as happy as we can be. So here's my message, and it's kind of corny, but when you go out there, just make it a little better. You know, just be a little nicer and don't rant or rave. And this is a song by Elvis Costello, and it asks the question, what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Is all.
Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. I hope you had a good time. Good night.